Hey, good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to beautiful Surfside, California, this lovely Saturday morning. I know it looks overcast. It looks kind of gloomy, but it's anything but that. It's another beautiful day, and we're blessed to be here. There's some guys fishing the surf right behind me here. I'll let you keep an eye on them. Let me know if they catch anything in the comments down below besides seaweed and junk like that. But Man, I'll tell you, there's a lot going on, including some really incredible bluefin tuna fishing. That is continuing. Oh, where, oh, where did our yellowfin tuna go? Great lobster fishing going on. I've got some info on that. And a little bit later in today's show, I've got the hot trolling lure on these bluefin tuna. Yeah, the Mad Max are still working, but there's another really great lure that's been super efficient and super effective here lately. You know what time it is, my friends. It's time for the morning briefing. Good morning, my friends. Oh, so good and so good to be with each and every one of you. If you don't mind, hit that like button. We deeply appreciate it when you do that. Share these videos. Stick the bell. You'll be notified when there's new content. Subscribe to Friedman Adventures and add to our 4 million views. Can't thank you enough for that. And, of course, leave a comment down below. All of that really helps the cause. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget about my new channel, Walk With Phil. Check that out on YouTube. Or if you happen to speak Spanish, coming on con el gringo Felipe. Uh, A couple new channels out there so we can all work on getting healthier together. Man, there's a lot going on. I can't. Thank you enough for joining us. Some dates that are coming up that are really important. Join us on a day and a half trip, leaving out of H&M Landing on board the Horizon. That's going to be November the 3rd. We'd love to see you on that one. Right around the corner, of course, we're on the Independence for five days. That's going to be a lot of fun. Love to see you on that one also. October the 20th and December the 2nd, we have our Christmas party in Redondo Beach. It's going to be so much fun. Great food, great people, great times got to see you there. Put it on your calendar. You'll be able to uh, make a reservation for that really exclusive Christmas party here in the next week or so. Hey, J.P. Pagsenhan, he is feeling a little down. J.P., you are always there for me. You're such a great guy. You're going to get better. I'm telling you that right now, and you're going to be out fishing again before you know it. All my prayers and thoughts are with you, my friend. Keep getting better. Nettie Leland really needs your thoughts and prayers right now really, really badly. So please keep him in mind also. All right, let's start out. Well, let's start with the lobster thing, okay? Because uh, there's some pretty darn good lobster fishing going on right now. And a lot of guys down in San Diego are complaining that it's not a good year. But I talked to Steve Oropesa over at Promar, and Steve said, look, inside San Diego Bay, there's some really good lobster hooping going on right now. However, what you have to do is locate that small structure, that little bit of structure. Besides that, it's got to have bait on it. If you find that small structure with some bait on it, it's been really, really good. Other areas have not been producing that well, but that has been the key. Now, here around the LA Orange County area, by far, Catalina Island is the best. It's been really productive, great hooping going on out there. If you get around Avalon, you're going to find a lot of boat pressure. If you get away from that, go up to the west, you're going to find very little boat pressure, and you're going to find some excellent hooping over there at Catalina Island. Don't forget, you can save 10% on your lobster hoop nets at Big Fish Bait and Tackle on the corner of PCH and Seal Beach Boulevard. And also, you can get it by going to promarahi.com, promarahi.com. Put in Friedman 10 at checkout for 10% off. So keep those tips in mind. That'll help you a lot. Dan and Ensenado will continue to see good fishing in the local areas, mostly big bonita down there. Oh, I want to call it three to eight pound bonita, something like that. Occasional yellowtail, a few sand bass, a few calico bass, good rock fishing down there. It's really been productive this year inside. In case you go offshore, and you don't find that kelp patty that you're looking for, or you don't find that school of yellowfin tuna or bluefin tuna or yellowtail or dorado on a kelp, you can fall back on that and have some fun. There's a lot of nice bonita around. If you take proper care of those things and bleed them and ice them, 
they make some of the best sashimi you'll ever have in your little lives. I'll tell you that right now. Some really, really great sashimi. So that's our Ensenada scene. That is not to say you can't go offshore down there and come up with a really good score. You can do that for sure, but it has been hit and miss. It's been hit and miss in a lot of different areas. Let's jump across the border and we'll talk about the LA Orange County region as well as the San Diego region because most everybody can reach the zone where the blue pantone are biting like crazy right now. Yes, of course, there are some misses, but I'm telling you right now, there was a list of boats that had either limits of bluefin tuna, that is two bluefin per person per day. So right there at limits on the bluefin tuna or close to it. Let me read you some of the boats that had that yesterday. It was outstanding. Highliner, Pacifica, Tribute, Aztec, Liberty, Fortune, Condor, Old Glory with Scott Buchert, the Fury out of Dana War Sword Fishing. All those guys at limits, most of them at limits or near limits on the bluefin tuna. Mostly, I want to call it 18 to 40 pound bluefin. I would say most of it's in that 18 to 25 pound range. And sometimes you'll get into a ripper bite. Most times you're going to get into a long plunker kind of bite. A prolonged period of time when you drift and you keep just a couple of fish going all the time. Maybe you go dry. But the guy's seeing stuff on the machine, so he says, we're going to be patient, we're going to hang in here, and then another fish gets uh, hooked up. So, again, and I do this all the time, but it's so important to your success, have some lighter stuff with you. If you're going on our Amigo trip Sunday night, bring some 20, 25-pound floral, bring some 40-pound, bring some 60-pound, have it all, because it depends upon where you find yourself in and what kind of bite you find yourself in. This thing is changing day to day you're definitely going to want to have all those different kinds of gear all that different type of tackle if it's a really finicky bite you may have to drop down to 20 pound and 20 if you do everything right yeah and if you don't know what you're doing get a coach next and that's one of the crew members just tell them i'm not really i'm really kind of new to this whole game i could really 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 use your coaching and help and those guys are fantastic so 20 you can land them 25 pound probably better 30 and 40 pound even better yeah but sometimes they won't bite it it's all about getting a bite sometimes you have to drop down to a number four circle hook in addition to that and also choosing a good hot bait i know you're starting to hear it in your dreams now it's so important you see a captain come down from the wheelhouse walk down on deck everybody's standing around looking at one another he casts a bait and hangs a fish it's because of his bait selection of course his ability to make a nice cast and hooking the bait properly a butt hook bait's been super effective nose hook bait if you're trying to get bit after a long soak on the retrieve also very very effective but just paying attention and doing all those things right and that bait selection is right at the top right at the top of what's going to get you a bite so boats really i mean all the way up to the freedom 22nd street landing redondo base boats are able to reach this stuff it's not very far from point loma but since you do need a little bit more time most of the full day boats now i'm going back to san diego are at about a fish per rod some guys below that some guys that take over that but about a fish per rod it's about a 35 40 mile run right now from point loma to get on that fish but yesterday we saw the sea watch the san diego several other boats at about a bluefin per rod 30 guys 30 bluefin tuna like that is what they are experiencing now if that fish just gets biting with a little bit more ferocity then you'll see that even go up from there and as you're noticing where did our yellowfin go a few days ago it was wide open yellowfin tuna with some dorado mixed in with it even some kelp patty yellowtail that is all dried up on us. Is it over? I don't think so. You know, most of the boys now are rolling toward this area of bluefin tuna. But one of these guys is going to peel off and go looking for that YFT. And I still think it's around. It's been coming in waves. It's been doing this all season long where you get them one day, you don't get them the next. For a period, a few weeks ago, it was very steady and solid and wide open. Yellowfin just loved to bite and bite really, really well. But here 
Right now, it seems like they're a little more scattered, a little more spread out. Somebody's going to have to get on top of that, and there's nobody better to do it than our Southern California fleet. They are so good at fishing this stuff. Up here in the LA Orange County area, we have seen a little bit of tuna, but the emphasis is on seeing the tuna because they have not cooperated one bit at all. The Patriot out of Newport yesterday, man, they saw a lot of tuna, a lot of bluefin and yellowfin are still in our local waters here, but they're just being real jerks here lately, and they haven't been buying that well. The guys like the Patriot, the Enterprise, the Victory, those guys are still able to take care of your rockfish needs. Some of them are turning their attention fully toward doing the rockfish or going back to Catalina until this tuna settles and bites a little bit better. Other guys are staying with it, thinking, man, we are seeing a lot of fish. It's only a matter of time. Same tackle, admonitions apply. Bring some light stuff, bring some heavy stuff. And also some of those small, shiny lures are a very, very good idea, like a Daiwa Sakana 150 to 100 grams really work well on this fish in this bite. So keep that in mind. I think that'll pay big dividends for you. Not sure how this is going to work out today, but hopefully we're going to see that fish really, really turn on. And for those of you who are private boaters, you better have your radar ready to go. All right, we told you that there's a hot trolley lure out there right now. Steve Oropesa from Promar joins us for a moment to tell us all about it. Of course, Steve's a very dear friend of mine. He's a really great angler, and I'll tell you, he's got the hot lure for you right now. One thing that you guys should have on your boat when you're out fishing is the cedar plug. This has been a staple in Southern California for a bunch of years, and it still works really great. Captain Justin on the Battleline Sport Fishing Boat is uh, reporting that the anchovy is working the best for him. He's actually hooked a bunch of yellowfin, some bluefin, and even a striped marlin in the last couple weeks on this color right here. He typically likes to troll them between six and eight knots. Um, and you want to put them either on the tail end of your wash or just outside your wash um, to get the best uh, success rate on these. So check these out at your local tackle store or visit us at promarahi.com. And thanks for watching. Thank you so much, Steve. Great job. It's good to see you again, my friend. And folks, you may want to give that a try. It's been super, super effective here lately. All right, island fishing. Not many guys are doing that kind of a thing. I know the Malahini fished bottom fish yesterday and had a great trip. Ricky Perez told me out of H&M Landing they decided not to go to the Coronado Islands where there has been a few yellowtail and okay calico bass, but they decided to fish the bottom stuff. They caught this thing. What do you think it is now? I mean, some guys are saying they're out rock fishing, number one. They caught this, and Ricky's saying, is this a sole or what is it? So what do you think it is, huh? Put a comment down below because I'm about to tell you what Dr. Milton Love thinks it is. So I'll give you a second. Put that comment in there. Don't cheat. Don't wait for me to tell you. He thinks it's a halibut, okay? He thinks it's a California halibut. And I told him the circumstances out in the deeper water, fish and rockfish. He said, hey, it's too big to be a sole. It looks to me to be a halibut. And halibut have been caught in 1,000 feet of water. We've recorded them in that depth, so there you have it. Dr. Love says halibut, what do you say? Put a comment down below. Even if you stuck around to hear that, do you disagree? A lot of guys like Ricky thinks it's maybe a, a patrolly sole or something like that. So there you have it. Coronado Islands, as I mentioned, a little bit of yellowtail, some bass out there at the San Clemente Island area. Not many guys fishing it too much. Really good fishing going on in terms of the offshore scene. Uh, yellows and bass, that kind of a thing. Incidentally, there's some giant big blue fit out on Cortez Bank once again. And I mean big stuff. Joe Russo checked in with me here this morning and said, Phil, I think if the fuel wasn't so darn expensive, we'd have more guys out on Cortez really targeting that big bluefin tuna. It's biting good out there. By the way, Joe says he talked to the fuel dock in San Diego, and they're saying that fuel prices are going to come down a little bit next week. So that is welcome news. That is for sure. Catalina Island, uh, whitefish, sheep's head, occasional yellowtail, okay calico bass. Up there in the Channel Islands, tremendous rock fishing going on in the Channel Islands. It has been Absolutely spectacular up there in Santa Barbara yesterday. Stardust, 180 rockfish and 18 big, beautiful lingcod. 
really some great fishing. You know, we haven't talked about Fort Bragg here recently. Every day is different, but there's still some albacore up there. Uh, we haven't heard too much about Big Ed, but there's been a few, and they even caught a yellowtail up there the other day so it's been kind of a crazy year up there in that neck of the woods which makes me think this year is not over it's going to be a fascinating year and somebody's going to bump into that yft for sure it's a saturday we're going to have more boats out more coverage here this weekend maybe this will be the time when they come up with that yft and more of that flatheads we'll see how that all works out all right um once again locally we look at San Diego, a little bit of calico bass down there, some rockfish, same thing up and down the coast. Some excellent rock fishing going on, as I mentioned. The Victory had whitefish and rockfish and sheep said the Monte Carlo is out this morning. They should be doing the same out of 22nd Street and Landing. Pursuit, who knows what they'll be up to. They've been focusing on the tuna, but they've missed a couple times, as have everyone else. And so they may be dropping back and fishing some rockfish. We'll keep our eyes on that. Also up there in the Channel Islands, guys like Cody on the island spirit. Cody Rogers has been also catching bottom stuff along the coast. In the surf, have these schmucks caught anything yet? I don't know. Uh, even the dog is looking kind of bored to me. I don't know. Have they caught anything? I haven't been watching these guys. I have a feeling they would have started jumping up and down and yelling if they had. Anyway, in the surf, we've seen some really good corvina fishing. That has been going on. Bloodworms have been working really, really well, or sandworms, which I'm going to try to dig up here in a moment. Everybody's got to have a hobby. I'm going to finish the morning briefing and take five minutes and see if there's any sandworms around here. How's that grab you? Um, in addition to that, we've seen some yellowfin croakers, some okay halibut fishing, at times some spot fin croaker also. Um, and that goes from the Bolsa Cheek area down to San Diego all the way up in the Channel Islands. Still some good barred perch fishing going on. It's been all year long on the barred perch. Didn't matter how warm the water got down or in the Huntington Beach Fair, dig up some sand crabs. It's been good. Or you can go to your surf fishing headquarters in the beautiful city of Seal Beach and pick up any of the baits your little hearts desire. You can pick that up down there as well as all the tackle you will need, whether it's surf fishing tackle or big game tackle, big fish, bait and tackle has it all for you. All right, my friends, we'll continue to watch this for you very, very closely. Once again, hit that like button, share these videos, tick the bell, subscribe, leave a comment, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a partridge in a pear tree. I can resist. Pretty close to Christmas. I can get away with that, can I? Hey, have a great day. Uh, keep those folks in mind, Eddie Leland and uh, JP. Hope you're doing much better, my friend. I hope to see you really, really soon. And uh, hopefully the sun's going to poke its nose out. These guys are going to catch some fish. Guys are going to find some yellowfin tuna. Looking forward to another great day here in Southern California. Don't miss our Christmas party December the 2nd. If you want to send me a text, I'll put you on the list right now. 657 Two two seven six four five nine. Have a great weekend, a great Saturday, and I hope to see you really, really soon.